Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, <coughs> Excuse me. and then it is posted to our website in our archives for you to watch uh, at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the um, shows we have on Encompass Live. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and we provide services to all types of libraries in Nebraska in the state. So you will find shows um, on Encompass Live on all, for all sorts of libraries, uh, public, K-12, academic, um, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera. Really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on to do presentations for us sometimes, and we have guest speakers that come on sometimes. Um, today, we have a mixture of that. <laughs> uh, today, we are talking about, as you can see here, letters about literature. And with us is uh, Tessa Terry, who's our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. Good morning, Tessa. And uh, Christy Walsh, who is the Assistant Library Director at Kearney Public Library. And uh, they're both involved in the Nebraska Center for the Books uh, Letters About Literature program. So I'm just going to hand it over to both of you to take it away and tell us all about this year's program. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you want to start, Christy, and just talk about the Letters About Literature program in general and how it works with the Center for the Book? I would be happy to. Thanks. Um, the Nebraska Center for the Book supports programs that celebrate and stimulate public interest in reading books and, and the written word. And we are an affiliate center with the Library of Congress. Letters about Literature is one of the programs that historically um, was based or done cooperatively with the Library of Congress. And in the past couple of years has become the responsibility of the state centers for the book. So we are very excited to continue this program as a statewide reading and writing program. It offers readers the opportunity to write letters to a favorite author or to someone who wrote a book that um, moved them in some way. It's not a book report, it's to say, hey, this book was wonderful, I want to tell you why or why it made a difference in your life. So um, there are opportunities for a variety of grade levels to participate. And to do that, you don't have to, you just need an adult to help you submit your application to send your letter in. And we look forward to seeing all of the creative letters that are written um, each year. Yeah, um, let's see. So here's just a little information about submission dates. So we always open the contest November 1st, and we close it on December 31st, so two months for people to submit their letters. In the past, um, people have done programs with this in the summer and then saved the letters to submit in November when the contest opens, so you don't have to write the letters in that time. You can write them anytime and just submit them when the contest opens. Let's see. So the information is always out there on the website at any time of year for people to go and look at and, you know, Whenever you read some, whenever uh, someone uh, you read something really cool they want to share. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. So, why the letters about literature program, Christy? Um, we've been doing this for many, many years. I want to say maybe eighteen, something I like think that. That's probably correct. Yes. Um why letters about literature i know we got started on this because it was a library of congress program um why is this a special program well i think it's a special program because it celebrates that connection between readers and writers that we've all met those books in our lives that 
touched us in some way and what a great way to reach out to those authors and say hey you made a difference because writing from listening to authors talk is a somewhat lonely um, vocation and the possibility to get some feedback or know that all of your labors that you put out there as this finished product made a difference in someone's life what a great way to celebrate that and so when participants write those letters and send them in we are so excited to as a center for the book to read those to know that books touch people and then celebrate those young authors the the students who participate and share how a book made a difference in their life because that's a lifelong thing um, maybe we you know adults too it would be great to acknowledge but there's not a category for that at this point <laughs> um, so it is a special program it is done nationwide centers for the book across the country celebrate letters about literature and have um, slightly different model perhaps but there is an opportunity for students to participate in a letters about literature program across the country so it's kind of fun also to see what our colleagues and other centers for the book are doing um, and it's a great way for students to practice your writing skills i mean you you get to do that all the time at school why not do something that is um, also fun so we want to celebrate that and very personal to you um reading and you know being affected by a book is huge very personal it can be so yes yeah yeah i think when we see letters um we see letters that come in that just have you know really personal themes from these students about why this book spoke so deeply to them and the books really range pretty widely i mean we've had nonfiction books win fiction books um yes. poetry it's just a memoirs like it's across the board what kind of book will speak to a student and how it has just change the way they see the world or see themselves. Yeah, those are deeply personal things and the courage it takes to write about them and then just send it off is really amazing, I think. Yes, most well, definitely. And there's so many talented young people out there. If, if there's another opportunity to celebrate young writers, yay, let's see what we can do. Um, so it's been a couple years now since we stopped doing the national program or that since the Library of Congress stopped doing this as a national program through them. Um, how is this different? How have we changed things just a little bit from when we did it with the Library of Congress? Um, I think it's perhaps, um, I, I want to say it's more refined. There aren't as many layers to it. And so previously, um, people would submit their entries. It would go to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., and they did some, um, they looked at all the letters and kind of weeded things out, or, or so they pared down what actually came back to the centers to look for the awards. Um, and that layer is no longer there. Um, there were advantages and disadvantages to that, but as a state, we've been able to streamline it and maybe customize it so it works really well for our center for the book and hopefully for all of the participants too um, the nebraska library commission does amazing things and some of it you know there's a lot of it behind the scenes but kudos to everybody at the commission who has helped us reinvent letters about literature for um, the state of nebraska and to continue it on and um so we get the letters still and then we get to celebrate so i'm i'm really happy it there was a little bit of a bumpy transition um, but who doesn't need a challenge once in a while to um, keep us all uh, on our toes perhaps so i think we've come through that and now we're um, really ready to move forward in a, a great way yeah i agree i i like that we have control of you know, getting those letters submitted to us. Um, if somebody has a problem submitting their letter, they talk to me probably. And so it's really easy to fix things or try to make it easier for a student or teacher to submit or answer their questions because we have control of the submission process. 
And then I know some of our judges have just commented that knowing they get all the letters and not a weeded version of them, they like that idea. And it allowed us to tighten up the time frame too for the whole process mm -hmm. that we didn't have a perhaps two month period in there where they were in Washington, D.C., and we really didn't know the status. And like Tessa said, we couldn't answer questions because we didn't know where things were in the process. Yeah, so it's just more, we just definitely have more control of it. You didn't even know if letters had been submitted or what was going on until you, until they weeded through them and then sent what they thought was good ones to you? Yes, they, they were all submitted to the National Center for the Book, and then they went through, did some rating and things on them, and then sent back to us the ones they felt were viable submissions. Well, it's nice to be able to do it ourselves now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice to be able to answer a question. You know, if if a letter would have gotten weeded back then, we could not answer why it had gotten weeded because mm -hmm. we never saw it before then or could give, you know, notes on what happened and then what went wrong. So yeah, I like that we kind of have control of that. And it has been a great um, partnership across the country. It's the Centers for the Book, even though the Library of Congress said we're no, no longer going to be a part of this program, the centers across the country said this is still really important. And each state has gone back and, and either reinvented or continued on what they were doing on a state level. So it continues to be a priority for all of the affiliate centers, even um, without the direct involvement of the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so this is a slide of our um, award ceremony kind of at the, the last step of it. But Christy, do you wanna go over what happens with the winners once we select those winning letters, what that ceremony looks like? Well, I haven't been able to attend because of weather and a variety of other things. Um, but we do, uh, the winners are notified. They are then recognized at um, a proclamation ceremony with the governor at the Capitol. And then we generally have a luncheon afterwards to celebrate the award winners. They have the opportunity to read their letters and share those. Um, and then we have awards for them as well. Did I leave something out there, Tessa? I'm sorry. Um, the Heritage Room. Oops, yes, okay, sorry. Um, once the winners are selected and we've had the celebrations, then they are placed in the Heritage Room at the Bennett Martin Library, um, which is part of the Lincoln Cities Library. So it becomes part of that literary heritage of the state of Nebraska. Yeah, it's a really fun day. Um, the kids get usually the morning off of school and yes. because it's usually on a Tuesday and um, yeah, you get to see the Capitol, you get to have a fun lunch, and then you see this really amazing room at the Bennett Martin Public Library where all these Nebraska authors have their work archived and saved, and we save your letters so that it's your first um, work as a Nebraska author saved in the Heritage Room. So that's really fun. So are they like cataloged and they have in there as like authors? Yep, they have um, they have their own um, section, and I know in the past um, there was a situation where one of the students years later came back and she wanted a copy of her letter to read for some event um, or for a family member, and she didn't have her own copy, but we had a copy of it in the Heritage Room that she could find. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. And we have generous sponsors that help us with that too. And so um, in the past, Humanities Nebraska, Houch and Bindery, um, Connie Osborne, Center for the Book, I'm forgetting somebody. Um, oh, Chapters Bookstore in Seward, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. all, all of those generous donors help continue the program and um, help make sure we can give awards to recognize each of these winners too. Mm -hmm. So here we have just a list of ways librarians, teachers, parents can get involved and, you know, promote this program at their library. So a couple of them are just librarians partnering with teachers in their classroom, um, media specialists, 
helping kids to select books. Um, sometimes you read a book and you just don't know how to, you know, lots of books affect you, but maybe you don't know which one you really want to talk about or which subject you feel most deeply about. And that's really where parents and teachers and librarians can come in and help students you know, know the difference between a book they liked and a book that really affected them. So just that, um, having that connection and talking to them about books, really, you play a huge role in that. Yes. Um, promoting the library as a place to find your book, um, sharing materials with your library users, whether that's books, bookmarks that we send you in book club kits or, um, a little printout that the contest um, and how you submit your work. Here's one that kind of Christy touched on earlier about adults being able to write letters. I mean, has this, do you have any adults in your book clubs that would might be interested in writing their own letters as examples for these kids to let them know, you know, what a letter even looks like? Sometimes kids don't even know what letters look like anymore, <laughs> you know, and, and what the difference between writing a letter to an author is versus a book report summarizing what happened in the book. Those examples can be huge. And it's nice for them to see adults doing this too. This isn't just something they're doing for school credit. Um, it's something that, you know, reflective writing has a huge impact on um, students and adults both. You know, that's why journaling and things yeah. like that are so huge. So yeah, it is, yeah. that yeah. as a way to see that this is not just an assignment, it's something they can carry through. And Let's the ability see. to put your thoughts into words and, and do it in a concise, thoughtful manner is a skill that it's a lifelong skill. You will use it again and again. So even if you don't love writing, it is good to keep up with it and be able to do it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the next one. Look for writing mentors from local writing groups or colleges um, that would be interested in working with kids on helping them with this reflective writing. Yes. Homeschool groups. Um, lots of libraries, homeschool groups use their public libraries as a resource. This would be a great project for them to work on. Um, we have no um, stipulations on what kind of book has to be written about. So it's totally up to them. And then what we've done in the past is libraries have hosted letter writing clinics as well. This was what I was talking about earlier, where sometimes in the summer or early in the school year, libraries or media specialists have hosted letter writing clinics where they go through the whole process of finding a book, um, writing drafts of your letter, reading it to each other, working on that, and then they submit them together as a group. So we have a lot of resources for letter writing cl clinics that you can access, and we'll go through that as well. All right, submitting your letters. So this process has changed drastically just over the last, I mean, five years um, from mailing in a physical letter to a submittable process online when it was still with the Library of Congress. And now we have our own submission page here at the Nebraska Center for the Book. So I'm just going to pop over. Nope, it's not going to let me do that. Let me just open my browser then. Okay, so on our Center for the Book page, um, under our Programs tab and our Letters about Literature page, we have a lot of great information for you. We have the 2021 guidelines that you can look up um, that just tell you everything you need to know about submitting your letter. The submission dates what we're looking for, where to submit your letter. We've got a URL on there. And then we also have some assessment things about what the judges are looking for and what the um, winner's process looks like. So this is all available on our website, but we have a huge submit button for you that takes you to just this very simple form. And what we're gonna ask for is um, a school name and a school phone number we don't ask for the student's contact information. So if this is, um, this could be a library name or a library number, 
we just want an adult's contact information if for some reason we can't get a hold of you by email. Um, the student's first and last name, the student's age, and since um, we have issues with kids under 13 submitting things, if you have a student that is under 13 as of November 1st this year, we just ask that you have a parent or legal guardian um, write in their name here to say that they um, consent to having their child's letter submitted electronically. We wanna know what level you're in. So that's by grade, level one, four through six, two, seventh through eighth, and level three is for high school students, ninth through twelfth. And then we wanna know your specific grade, just so we know kind of where whether you fall in the low end or the high end of there. Just a little more information for us. But when they do, when you guys do the actual evaluation and competing, they're grouped into those three levels. Right. Yeah. Not just mm -hmm. one grade, all of yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's it's really only after we've selected winners that we go
back and we We like to know that information. Information. Just for our records to know that it's Greater one, or that a twelfth. Greater run. kind of a thing. Um,
here. Here's the more. more contact. information So we put a teacher's name Or teach A teacher
This can be library can be